Welcome to lesson 1.4 of the video, Situational Graphs, Graphs from the Real World. What is a situational graph? A situational graph is a type of graph that isn't necessarily formed by mathematical equations, but more by something you see in the real world or your actions even, perhaps. For example, let's say I wanted to graph my trip to visit a friend. Okay, now, the two things I would want to compare would be the time I spend walking and the distance I get away from my house. Okay? Now, I was started home. That means my time hasn't started, but neither has my distance. And I decided to go ahead and walk. Here I am walking. I'm getting, the time is passing, but as the time passes, I am getting farther away from home. Well, I get here and I stop. I sit, find a friend I'm on the street. We're just talking. But I'm not getting farther away, but the time is still passing. So now it's going to flatten out. Time's still passing. I'm not getting further away. I say my goodbyes, and I decide to go for a little bit more of a walk, but I'm a little tired, so I kind of stroll. I don't go nearly as fast. Notice my steepness of the line. I'm not going nearly as far as the time passes, but I'm still traveling. And I get to this point and realize, oh my gosh, I left the iron on. It's time to go home. So I decide to run home. Now when I run home, that line's going to get very steep because time's passing still, but I'm covering a lot of ground. So this is a situational graph. No equations necessary, no numbers even. We're just comparing two variables, time versus distance, and the actions that, my, that I myself took. Now let's take a look at this first graph. Again, we're comparing time and distance, our distance from home, the time we travel in minutes. We are starting up here, so we're actually starting away from home this time. And let's take a look at each interval. Here we have the interval between 1 and 2. And between 1 and 2, it's obvious that what we are doing is getting closer to home. So we are traveling towards home. We get to 2. The next interval is interval number 2. Now we're actually going away from home. And we're doing it a little faster, aren't we? Because uh, our line is a little bit steeper than it was here. Now we are at interval three, and we level off. When we level off, that means we have stopped. We probably just stopped moving. Maybe we stopped talking to a friend or stopped to get gas. Who knows? Our next interval is interval four. We're going to travel a long time, a little bit longer time, um, but we're coming towards home now. Our next interval five, we have stopped again. Our next interval between six and seven, we're going back away from the house or away from home. Interval seven, we've stopped again. And finally, our last interval from seven to eight, we travel all the way back to the house. Now let's take a look at our graph in a little more detail and answer some of the questions we have below. Our first question reads, during which intervals is the graph increasing? Now if we look at our graph, we look for the lines, what parts is the graph going up? We have this one, interval 2, and this one, interval 6. And in both cases you can see where the graph is heading up. Now what does that mean? Well in this case, it means that when we, like on interval two, we start here, we go to here, we're traveling. Uh, as time passes, we are getting farther away from home. So an increase means we're moving away from home. Our next question, what does it mean when it's decreased? Or first of all, what intervals are decreasing? We can look here and see four and eight, and of course, one are all decreasing. And what does that mean? Well, in this case, it means we're getting closer to home. And finally, what intervals is it constant? We can see here that 3, 5, and 7 are constant. And what does that mean? Well, that means we have come to a stop. And we are not traveling at all. Time's passing, but we're not moving anywhere. 
Now let's take a look at the next item on your notes, reasonable domain and range. Now before we start all that, let's remind or remember what domain and range are. Domain is just all the x values and range is made up of all the y values. Okay, so here we have a graph that's representing the scenario of ball being kicked in the air. Uh, the, along the x-axis we have all the values that represent the time and on the y-axis we have all the uh, values representing the height of the ball. Here you can see the ball starts here, it's kicked up into the air, it's going to travel this up, as time passes it goes a little higher, it gets to a certain point and then it begins coming back down to the ground. The entire trip that the ball is in the air takes five seconds and it looks like the height goes to about six and a third. Now remember, this is not necessarily the, the path the ball takes. This is the time versus the height. The ball could be going straight up. Uh, could go a lot of different ways, but it's in the air for five seconds and it goes as high as this distance right here. So let's come up with our domain. Our domain again, x values. The ball is kicked at zero, it travels in the air, it finally hits the ground after five seconds. Our domain is anywhere in between here. It's not after, it's not before, it's not negative, time won't even go negative. So we can write our reasonable domain as everywhere between zero and five. So we'll write that zero is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to five, meaning the domain is between zero and five, including zero and five. Next, we'll look at our range. Now we have to decide what that stopping point is right there, and just for ease, I'm gonna say that that's 6.25. That means our ball goes as high as 6.25 units into the air. It starts at zero, it doesn't go below zero, doesn't go any higher. That means our range is going to be between 0 and 6.25. So we'll write this as 0 is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to 6.25. That means our range is somewhere between 0 and 6.25, including those two. Now we can move on to the last section of our notes. Here we're going to take a look at a, a couple scenarios and try to match them with the graphs below. The two scenarios we have are Katie walked from home to the library, did some homework, then walked back. But in this, in this case, we're going to look at compare distance from home versus time. In the second example, we're going to look at Katie walked from home to the library, did some homework, and then walked back. Same scenario, but this time we want to compare speed to time. In our first example, we're comparing distance from home to time. So let's take a look at the scenario. Katie walks from home. That means she starts at home. She starts at zero. She walks to the library. She's walking away from the house. As time in, uh, increases, she's getting farther away. That's going to have. That's going to be a positive correlation. It's going to be heading up. So we can eliminate O for number one. Now she does some homework. That means she pauses. She stops. She's no longer going away from home. Time doesn't stop, but she's no longer going away from home. So that could still be K or G. A life flat line. And finally, she walks back. When she walks back, this is the key, She's now her distance from home is now getting smaller. She's coming back home. She's coming back to zero. So for this one, that's going to match up with G. She walks to the library, studies, then walks back home. And we can label this as this is the time that is passing. And this is the distance from home. And sorry about the H there. For number two, Katie walks from home to the library, did some homework, then walked back. But this time we're comparing speed versus time. When she walks from home to the library, all we're looking at is a speed. She's going to walk probably the same speed all the way. Okay. Here we have an increase, something going up. Here we have something flat. Next, she does some homework. When she does some homework, she's not moving. Her speed should be zero. Not just this kind. This isn't zero, but this is. Finally, she walks back. When she walks back, she's probably going to walk the same speed. It's going to look very similar to when she walked to the library. When she gets home, what does she do? She stops. So our answer is going to be O. Oh. Here, she's walking. She's keeping a nice constant uh, speed. She gets to the library and stops because she's studying. 
Okay, she's not going anywhere. Her speed is zero. Then when she decides to leave, she starts walking again and she jumps right back up to her speed, walks all the way home, and then stops. So we'll label this one time as time passes her speed over here. So her speed is constant, stops, is nothing because she's sitting down studying. She starts walking again, her speed is constant, and then she stops once more. We've now finished our notes for today. Be sure to answer the next questions on your own. Go through each of those, take a look at the graphs below, and try to match them to the scenarios that are set up for you. And finally, for the next class, make sure you come with a question of the day. These are very important. They kind of guide our discussion. Make sure we clear up any problems that you might have had when you watch the video. And the good news is, in class, you'll be working with the CVRs. These are really fun little pieces of technology where you get to get up and create graphs using your own actions and a calculator. You'll have a lot of fun with it and you'll learn a lot doing it. So thanks for listening and get to work.